Hail to the king, baby. Hello, right, everyone. This is Tim with Online Big Blue, bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. And it's Hail to the King. We've got a lot going on today, a lot to talk about. We have the exclusive Joe Judge phone calls to his players. I don't want anyone to know how I got it, but I got it. I got a copy of it. He wasn't lying. He was telling the truth. We want to talk about how the Giants, the the floor is the ceiling for the Giants in 2022 and how the fans base seems to be okay about it. We want to talk about Julian Love basically coming out and supporting his coach by wrecking his other, by basically calling out his other coach, which I don't agree with because I think anyone who's ever played the game, anyone's been in, in any type of locker room knows what happens in the locker room stays in the locker room. We want to talk about how Shermer and both Rivera actually took the high road against Joe Judge, which was very surprising to me. But it's just it's just one of those things. It's just it's just the Giants. Now, let's get this season over with so we can actually talk about some football. We talk about the draft. Talk about Malik Willis. We can talk about anything else but this team. But we have the exclusive phone call. That Joe Judge made, or a player made, to one of Joe Judge's players. And I'm not going to talk about how we got this, but we got the exclusive, we, got, we have an exclusive phone call. Are you ready? I'm going to play it now. Here we go. Let me find the cue. Ready? Here we go. Exclusive phone call. Joe Judge talking to a former player. Now we, we have changed it. We have modulated the former player's voice, so you won't recognize him. But here we go. Now let me just find where the buttons are. Okay. We got the, we got the button. I, I think everyone's ready. Here we go. Exclusive phone call from Joe Judge. Hello? Hi, this is Joe Judge. Is this a former player? And there we go. There's the exclusive phone call from Joe Judge to a former player. And that's what the narcissist does. He, he, he provides details or she provides details that can never be corroborated. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just thought, I just thought that was funny. I just thought that was funny. I also want to talk about Tiki Barber briefly. Uh, Tiki Barber came out on his radio show the other day and basically was talking about the Giants. He was he was pointing he was pointing out major problems with the organization, which I think is interesting because Tiki's been so dis- disconnected from the Giants after what he did to Eli Manning during that 2007 season. I think it's funny that he's going to give his one perspective. About him. Barbara basically came out and says, I think anyone except for whoever the new GM is, is basically on a one year prove it deal. It's hard to operate that way. Yeah, we did a video about that yesterday. You can't really, it's, it's there. And it's, there was, I think it was going back 2007, 14 times, general managers were forced to take on head coaches and it worked seven times. Well, I wouldn't say it worked, but they lasted more than one season. And I think he's right. I think Tiki's right. I mean, I don't think he's wrong. There is an unattainable They're in an unattainable situation. It's one of the worst situations in football. And I know that's saying a lot, especially with the Jaguars, but the Jaguars have no exceptions. So I can, I can think the giants because of their history and the former perception of the team as an ideal to live up to. They are one of the worst positions in the league right now. You're not wrong. The floor is the ceiling for the giants. And I'm just dumbfounded that so many giant fans are willing, not so many, but I'm, I'm not going to say they're uneducated fans, but so many fans are willing to give Joe Judge the benefit of the doubt. Willing to give Joe Judge a third season after a complete and total meltdown. And some people are like, well, you know, he just said, you know, it's just, it happens. He's human. No, you're the head coach of the New York Giants. You're supposed to be able to handle the pressure. Just to handle, to handle the pressure. And I don't see that happening. I don't. And then I see this other weird story. I know I'm, t- I'm bouncing around a lot, but I see another weird story. The Giants are floated as a new home for Baker Mayfield. He just had surgery on his non-throwing shoulder. And, and with Joe Judge and, and, and Daniel Jones ready to return, I don't see them going out and getting Baker Mayfield. Now, trust me, I would love to have Baker Mayfield. I would love to have Baker Mayfield over Daniel Jones. I would love it. Now, he's still under contract until 2022. The team exercised a fifth-year option, which was worth 18.9 back in April after he came off what you know, was a career campaign. But you know what? If you want to trade Baker for Jones straight up, 
I will get Daniel the bus ticket. I will take the Isaac Yitam dollar ninety eight we raised to get him a bus ticket out of town, and I will switch that over to the Daniel Jones fund for Baker Mayfield. I, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just bringing that out. But like I said, it's the audacity to me that so many fans have have kind of. I don't want, I don't, and I don't want to say have kind of distanced themselves from reality when it comes to the Giants, but they're all kind of some. And I watch it on Twitter, and they just kind of just written it off like, okay, yeah, we're going to be bad next year. We haven't even finished this year, and people are already thinking we're going to be bad next year. Right now, as of today, we would have the first and excuse me, the fifth and eighth pick, the start, the thirty sixth pick, the sixty seventh and the seventy eighth, the via Miami Dolphins. The 110 via via the Chicago Bears, the one, 145th and the 170th via the uh, Kansas City Chiefs, our own 182nd pick, and we don't own a seventh round pick. So we have assets to build things, and I understand it, and I get that. But I can't just keep. I, I just can't just think to myself, we're just gonna write off the season. We're just gonna write it off. <laughs> we're just call, We're just calling it a day. And I know some pronosticators have us taking like three offensive linemen in a top and the top three was our top three picks. I just can't see making that investment. You you should be able to have a coaching staff this large have the ability to what they refer to as coach up a player. We need to coach up a player. I mean, and, and, and we don't coach up anybody. I don't really see us making guys better. And that's why I'm saying the floor is the ceiling for next year. And I, and I agree with that. But you got to have hope. And that's, and that's in the fan base's mind. The floor is the ceiling for 2023. We have to have some type of hope. And we can, like I said, we, we're, we're now going to pin all of our hopes in the draft. We aren't going to pin all our hopes in free agency, which we have no free agent money. It's just a bad situation. Tiki's right. And Joe Judge, I think it's funny. The two, the two, Shermer and Rivera, who both were called out by Judge, kind of just, I don't even want to say took the high road, but kind of just said, you know, it is what it is. We're not going to, we're not going to really get into it. Shermer, of course, came out and disputed what was said. And he says, obviously, that's not an accurate assessment. But beyond that, I have no comment, which is the perfect thing, which is the perfect thing to say. Because Judge basically came out and said he was told that the Shermer's 2019 Giants quit on everyone quit. Everyone tapped out, stopped showing up at captain's meetings. I, obviously, that's not an accurate. And then Shermer came out and said, it's obviously an accurate assessment. This makes me hate Joe Judge more because he's just trying to deflect blame. And, I, and, and Julian Love is on my list now, too. Because you don't sit there. You don't sit there and, and, and talk about what happened or didn't happen in the locker room. If you've ever played the game or been in an NFL locker room, what, what's, what's in the, what, what happens in the locker room is supposed to stay in the locker room. You know, and they talk about how it was uh, Golden Tate had a golf bag at his locker for at least half the season. Oh, a golf bag. I'm going to tell you something right now. Don't go into a major league locker room. Because I've been into major league locker rooms, and you'll see a lot of golf clubs. Oh! I mean, truly, it's farcical. And then they talk about how Alex Ogletree had a, uh, had a, what you call it, had a, uh, had, a, what did he have? He had, some, he had a poker table or something. So what? It's a locker room. He even bought a poker table for teammates to use around the holidays. Oh my God. So they try to build up some camaraderie. That's called phoning it in. Really? Wow. They had a ping pong table too in the locker room. And frequently, players gathered together during person of the day when media was not was allowed inside the locker room. And at one point, they even had a cornhole board games for players to play. Sounds like, to me, they were just trying to treat these guys as men. I don't call that phoning it in. And you don't call out another coach, Joe. I know, you're, I know you've been a coach for a hiccup, which is two years. But you just, you just make me sick. You really do. And Ron Rivera, God bless his heart, he, he doesn't really let Joe Judge off the, off, the, uh, off the snide about the fist fight. And no one's going to bring up the fight the Giants had in training camp. <laughs> no one's going to bring that up. Do you have an Ingram shit? No one's going to bring that up. 
Or does that mean Joe Judge lost the locker room? And then he basically says, honestly, I Rivera, I find it interesting that I and, and I have no response to that. To me, the important thing is we play on Sundays more so than anything else, and I'm more concerned about getting ready for a football game as opposed to anything else. That's just what it is. That's one of those things for each guy to handle their own situation themselves. As far as I'm concerned, what people don't know, that just the facts that we're not paying attention or enough attention to understanding what's going on, I'm not going to worry about it. Joe Judge is a joke. I'm sick of the Giants. I'm sick of this organization doing this stuff. We look more and more like a clown show. That's for you, bad dog. Than anything else. But don't worry. We've already written off next season. That's why we're going to do some Knicks stuff. We're going to do some Giants stuff. I'm doing radio stuff. I'm also going to start doing uh, night games, though. I'm going to do Met games. Met play-by-play. People have asked for it. And I don't have the melonious voice to do it. Just a bit outside. Try the corner and missed. Well, that's 0-2 right now to Peter Alonzo. See, it'll be fun. <laughs> it'll be interesting. It'll be a good time. We're going to do a lot of fun stuff on the channel. Even with the Giants, we're going to do a lot of live streams. We're going to do a lot of fun stuff. We're going to, we're, we're, we're just going to, we're just going to, we're just counting out the days for this season, this train wreck to end. And like I said, I'm sick of Joe Judge. I'm sick of his mouth. I don't want to hear it anymore. I need, I need, I need a break from the Giants and I need a break from Joe. I think we all do. And again, we're going to do our Sunday stream, of course, 10.30 a.m. before the game preview. We'll do our 9 o'clock uh, stream as well. And then we'll do our Monday after the debacle stream because I hope Washington beats us by 100. I'm not going to the game. I was going to go to the game. I was going to stay on the sidelines. I'm not going. Not going. Don't care. I'll watch a little bit of it, but I don't really care. That's the problem. That's the problem when I've been a fan since 76 and I don't care anymore. I know a lot of other fans are like that. And I got this is Tim with Online Big Blue, bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. And as always, if you could like, maybe subscribe, ring that big note to me, that'd be awesome.